Welcome, everybody. This is the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. Every week, we try to bring you stories that will inspire you. As Rotarians, we're into service above self. And uh, as a club, we have a special interest in innovation, entrepreneurship, and education. This week, we have with us Lex Gillette. If you have seen his TEDx talk, you know you are in for a treat. We will make sure that that link is available to you below so that if you, you are, are as intrigued by his message as I'm sure you will be, you can follow that to, uh, to learn more about Lex and his work. Now, uh, Lex is a Paralympian. Uh, he, is, he is an athlete who currently holds the world record in the long jump for blind athletes. Uh, he was training uh, to, to be part of the Tokyo Olympics this year. And of course, we've had interruptions along those lines. However, we are very excited to have him with us. Lex, welcome to the Rotary E-Club of Silicon Valley. Thank you so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. All right. <clears throat> Thank you again, just to reiterate, for having me tonight. And I will begin by starting. When I was a child, I purchased a, a basketball hoop designed for the top of a closet door. I took this basketball hoop and, and took a safety pin and tied the bottom loops of the net together so that a successful basket would mean the ball would stay inside of the net and not fall through to the ground. Now, in the beginning, I was absolutely horrendous and terrible at making baskets, but I have a really good excuse. I'm, I'm blind. It was after a while, I, I said, you know what? There's something that I need to do. And there were two things specifically that helped me out tremendously. And number one, it was learning the, the different dimensions of my room, where different landmarks were, were located, where the bed was located, where my dresser was located in relation to the basketball hoop, where my bedroom door was located in relation to the, ba the, the basketball hoop. And I began to build this, this image, this picture of where I needed to shoot. And yes, I was still, <laughs> I was pretty bad in the beginning, however, as I began to number two, envision where the rim was, the ball began to go in. And I could do things like, oh, oh, Lex, he shoots from the, from the bed. And it goes in, oh my gosh, that's so amazing. Oh, he shoots from across the room, the dresser. Woo, oh my gosh, he is so, he is killing it right now. And what I realized is that a lot of times in life, one of the biggest things that we face is taking a shot in the dark. Envisioning where that rim was, that helped me sharpen my focus tremendously. It was that same razor sharp focus that helped me win gold on the global stage at the 2015 World Championships in Doha, Qatar. I was standing on the runway, awaiting the cues from my guide, Wesley. And I hear him say, are you ready? That symbolizes, that gets me in a position where I lean forward slightly, put my right foot back. And he says, right there. And there's one word that Wesley says over and over and over, because by the sound of his voice is how I know which direction to run. And that one word is fly. There's a lot of guides out there. They have different words, but fly, that is, that's ours. And Wesley, he claps his hands faster and faster as he says this word, fly, 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 fly. Except for the roar of the crowd, the sound of his voice is all I hear. I take off in his direction, counting every step along the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, jump! When I land, cheers echoed throughout the stadium as I had 
landed in the gold medal position in the competition. And I was able to hear that national anthem and have the American flag raised for all to see. And triumphs like the one you just heard, those result from taking shots in the dark. Now, I want you to think about a couple of things. Just, just ponder to yourself, do you think that this raging determination to succeed, are we born with this? Does this type of attitude come from facing hardships? If I still had my sight, do you think I would still have this relentless attitude? That's a question that I think about a lot. And I certainly think that losing my sight has played a huge role in my ability to, to persevere and to push forward and to, to have a no excuses type attitude. Because a lot of people expect for me to live my life a certain way and to, to do certain things and maybe play the piano type thing, but I'm a little different. So I wanna, I wanna show you something. When I'm competing in the Paralympic Games, I'm required to wear a blindfold. And this is actually the one that I wear when I compete. And when you put this on, you can't see anything through these and although it hasn't always been this way this is how i live my life every single day so i want you to live inside my skin for just a moment i want you to close your eyes and imagine your your highest potential what does that look like what would you be doing your true potential I imagine myself running and, and, and jumping and flying. I imagine myself traveling around the world and, 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 and competing in front of thousands and thousands of spectators standing on the podium with the American flag raised high and having gold medals placed around my neck. I imagine myself flying as far as my mind would carry me. What do you see for yourself? You can open your eyes. Now I will say one of the cool things about this blindfold is that on the inside, hopefully this is in a good position, but on the inside on this position of the blindfold, there's some braille there and it says no fear. And that's a constant reminder that whatever competition we go into, whatever elements that we face, no matter how loud the crowd is, no matter how windy it is, all of those things can sometimes impact the sound of my guy's voice and where he's yelling, where the sound of his voice is coming from. But we train in so many of those different, different environments so that when we are faced with those things in a competition, I can say, bam, I've experienced this before. So any type of anxiety or any type of challenges that may be felt from a, from a mental and emotional standpoint, I'm able to ward those off. I know what this feels like. Let's get out here. Let's make it happen. And that same vision that I spoke of earlier, my high school Excuse me, my high school teacher saw that vision and he helped me see it within myself. When Brian Whitmer was my high school teacher and he introduced me to, to the long jump. And it was through a physical fitness test where we had to do a multitude of activities and one of them was standing long jump. I stand in one spot, jump it forward as far as I can. I was one of the best jumpers in the entire school and my mom kept me in, in mainstream school. So I was competing against other athletes who could see. So I said, oh man, <laughs> well, if I'm beating kids who can see, if I compete against other individuals who are like me, I should be able to obliterate them. Easy. 
but it wasn't that easy. I quickly found out that I needed to run and then jump. It wasn't me standing in one spot and jumping as far as I could. So Mr. Whitmer said, since you can't see what's going on, I'm going to stand at the takeoff point. I'm going to clap and yell. And your responsibility will be to remember how many strides you take to run as straight as possible, as fast as possible to the sound of my voice. And you jump. Super challenging in the beginning. But he believed in me so much and he saw so much within me that I began to see within myself. One of the biggest lessons that I learned from him is the difference between sight and vision. Because sight reveals to us what is and vision reveals to us what can be. Sight is our current reality, but vision allows us to see past our reality. Vision allows us to see what we can do, where we can go, and who we can be. There's so many, there's, there's millions and millions of people around the world who have perfect eyesight, but they don't have 2020 vision. So let me give you a, an instance of when I refuse to allow sight to overpower my vision, I refuse to accept the current reality because I had a different vision for the future. And it was about four years ago now, down in Rio, I was on the brink of elimination. I had one jump remaining. And if I didn't land within the top eight of the competitors, I would be removed from the competition. No medals. But I didn't travel all that way from, from San Diego, California to come back home empty handed. That, that was not in my vision. So I slid that blindfold down. And I focused on the only thing that mattered at that particular time, which was Wesley's voice. And I took off in his direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, jump. And when I landed, not only did I realize that I would make another appearance on the podium, I had won my fourth Paralympic medal for Team USA. Once I lost my sight, that was a huge point for me because I wasn't imprisoned by what is. I gained freedom in seeing a vision of what could be. Losing my sight at, at eight years old, that was huge. It, it helped me to, to transform myself and experience four Paralympic medals and to win four world championship titles, to become the world record in the long jump. Vision has allowed me to be the only totally blind athlete in the world to go over 22 feet in the event. When I was eight years old, I started experiencing retina detachments. I went to the doctor and that led to a string of 10 operations of which none of them were successful. And after the last one, doctors said that there was nothing else they could do to help my sight. From that day forward, it was go home, go through your normal routine, go to sleep at night, wake up the next morning, seeing a little less than what you did the day before until one day I woke up and I couldn't see anything. And at that point, I had a decision to make. I could either accept my current reality or I could take a shot in the dark. Now, my goal tonight is to encourage you to, to take a shot in the dark, to fly. And this quote that comes to mind is, is super poignant for this particular time. And it is for those determined to fly, having no wings is just a little detail. And this song by the Beatles is, is perfect for our shot and our flight. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these broken wings and learn to fly all this time. 
You are only waiting for this moment to arise. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Take these sunken eyes and learn to see all this time. You are only waiting for this moment to be free. Blackbird fly, Blackbird fly into the light of the dark black night. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Fantastic. So we have got a lot of people on the recording. I want to introduce real quick, and then we're going to jump into some questions because I know we got plenty. Uh, let me start by saying that, uh, and we'll just go in the order I see folks. So wave when I call your name in Santa Clara, California, Farahina Bassi, our membership chair for the uh, Rotary Club of Silicon Valley. Uh, Heather Edwards from the Metropolitan uh, Eugene Rotary Club. Uh, we've got Tanya Martin, our programs chair for the e Club of Silicon Valley in Atlanta, Georgia. Raquel, Dr. Raquel, who has been putting in 24 hour days, seven days a week, it seems, uh, to, to address our COVID issues where she is in uh, Tijuana. Is that right? Yep. All right. Awesome. Uh, Cecilia Bab, she is our president, by the way, for, for our, our, our club. Cecilia Babkirk, our vice president for the Rotary Club of Silicon Valley, who is here in San Jose, a returned Peace Corps volunteer from Ethiopia. Shag Shagrin, uh, our our paella master and, uh, and, oh, wow. and, and somebody who is, is pushing his way to, to, towards a half century of perfect attendance in Rotary. Sandy Stabile, uh, one of our members and also part of the team that handles membership in, uh, in our district 5170. Uh, we have Mahmoud uh, Khan who is in San Jose and, and part, of, uh, part of the programs committee as well. Yeah, I'm a member of the Rotary Club of Silicon Valley. We have uh, Kuldeep Ambasta, who is uh, the president of the Stanford Peninsula Alumni Club. Thank you for yep. joining us, absolutely. And Valerie Sun uh, in Southern California, a, a language teacher and uh, an ed tech specialist. And, and we are happy to have everyone with us. I'll kick off the questions. So Lex, you know, I, I learned about you from, uh, from our, our friend, Janet Perez and, uh, in North Carolina. And I believe you connected with her on some educational issues. So you're involved in some educational projects, as I understand. Yep. 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 Definitely a lot. Um, so even though everything is, a lot of my life is consumed by athletics right now, but prior to me even getting to that point, it was all about, it was education. It was transitioning from being able to see to not being able to see. So I had a, a ton of individuals who were really instrumental in my life. And a lot of them were, were, were in the, uh, they were educators. And so I think at this particular time in life, I, I look back on those times and, and realize how important it was to have teachers in the classroom and um, uh, orientation and mobility specialists and, and like transition counselors, so many different people who helped me along the way. And so now one of the things that I, that I do is mentor the, the blind and visually impaired and try to help equip them with the pertinent life skills that will help them basically shift their mindset so that they can see that, listen, I can go out here and I can be self-sufficient, independent, and I can win a, a gold medal, figuratively speaking, in whatever arena of life that, that means the most to them. And then there's also a, a program that I'm a part of called Classroom Champions, which is an organization that is for uh, Olympians and Paralympians and professional athletes are paired with students around the the country and abroad who are in kind of you know underserved areas and we teach them monthly on different topics that are uh basically in an sel program so pertinent skills that will help them in and in and outside of the classroom and i really love that program because it lasts for the duration of the school year so from august until may we're connected with students around the globe and helping them to learn how to set goals, learning about the importance of the community and how to persevere. What about healthy living and teamwork and courage? 
Um, so trying to equip them with the necessary tools and skills so that they can be able to, you know, conquer the, uh, the, the changes of the, of the world. Um, so yeah, I know how important it was for me. And I think that it's important to give back to, to the, the generation that's coming up, the kids behind us. Absolutely. The, the, uh, the sense of what, what it means to, to have that difference between sight and vision, uh, you know, for all of us who are Rotarians thinking about ways we can make a difference, you know, what, what mm. it requires is seeing and then having a vision to, that we can act on it in some way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Heather, I know you've got a question. Thank you. Lex, thank you so much for, for sharing your story. I'm, I'm a Rotarian from Oregon. And awesome. one of the things that I'm most grateful for as a Rotarian is this opportunity that we often have to meet really beautiful souls like you and thank you. people that have these inspiring stories. Uh, my concern is for these people who are so inspirational. So my question for you as you're inspiring people who inspires you? What what inspires you? What fills your bucket back up? Because you're so generous with your story and, and your vision. Who inspires you? Who or what? Um, you know what? I think that it's just the everyday type of person out there who, who kind of sees more for themselves, the person who isn't afraid to you know, kind of be vulnerable and connect with others. And I point that out because that's such a challenging question for me. I mean, I could certainly name other athletes and things like that, but all of my, everything for me came from my mom and from teachers and from Cub Scout and Boy Scout leaders and, and other friends. Um, and don't get me wrong, there are a lot of athletes who are inspiring to me, but I look at athletics as you know, I was, you know, like, it's a God-given talent to me. And like a number of things, you know, athletics is, it's, it's short-term. You can only do it for so long. You're only going to be as fast. You're only going to be able to jump as far and, and as high as you can. And so um, all of the people who have been a part of my life helped me to establish a framework that is, it's like, it's, it'll last the duration of, of life. And so that's what I really appreciate. And that's what inspires me when I see other people who kind of start from nothing, if you will, and they figure out a way to, to overcome that when they connect with others and they, they begin to lock into something that's bigger and greater. And they in turn come up with a plan to be able to pursue that and actually bring it to reality. Oh, that types of, that type of stuff, like that gets me fired up. Like that, it's like magic to me. Going from nothing to something is, is is super magical, and it doesn't have to be winning gold medals. It could be you prom getting promoted to manager, to CEO, to whatever. It could be you getting your doctorate. It could be you scoring the winning goal as a you know middle schooler in, in in soccer. Like it could be anything. Like I just like to see when people are out there um, bettering themselves. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, Cecilia, you've got a question. So go ahead and unmute and speak up. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so actually I have a couple questions. Um, okay. And the first one is, do you think you would have been able to achieve what you have had you remained sighted into your adulthood? Um. Oh my gosh, that's a hard question. Um, I think that it would be more challenging for me. If I had sight, I think it would be a lot more challenging. Um, I don't, I can't really put my finger on it as to why it would be more challenging. But at this particular time in life, like me losing my sight has provided a lot of fuel and a lot of energy to be like, look, I'm going to go out here and I'm going to make it happen. I think a lot of it is because given the world that we live in as a person with a disability, um, a lot of times we're, we're viewed as like less, you know, incapable, not being able to do this. Maybe some people look at us as less than whatever the view is. Um, a lot of the perceptions are, are, are generally, they're usually misconceptions. Um, and so that drives me a lot because not only am I wanting to prove others wrong, I think that I am in a lot of ways just wanting to prove myself right. 
that, you know, I, I saw this all along and I could do this all along. And people are just, you know, they have been the, the, the blind ones, figuratively speaking, and, and I'm <laughs> opening their eyes to what's truly possible. Sure. Well, I think it is true that when you have sight, you can see how everyone else is doing and compare yourselves to them. And whereas um, not having sight, you had only yourself, yeah, really, to compare yeah. to. And yeah. so I was just kind of curious about that. That's a good question. And do you, do you think your life might have taken a different turn if you had remained sighted? Um. That is, man, that is challenging. Um, <laughs> I don't, you know what? I think that for lack of a better term, it may have just been like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to get through school. And education is huge from my mom's perspective. So, and, and it is of, of mine as well. But, um, you know, she wanted me to graduate from high school, get a college degree and be able to contribute to society like the next person. So who knows? I may have been in North Carolina and having an eight to five, uh, you know, who knows? Um, but I, I will tell you this, I wouldn't ask for anything different. I think that I wouldn't even, I wouldn't want to see any more at this point. I think that it would be much more of a, it would be a hindrance than it would be a, a help. I think at this point, there's nothing really that would make me any happier than what I am right now. Um, if I had sight. So, I'm I'm totally <laughs> I'm totally content. Sandra Steve, I'll to everyone. I have a question. That's great. That's great. So in addition to being a a top flight athlete, uh and and obviously a motivational speaker as well, uh you are a musician and an author. Uh would would you be willing to talk a little bit about about your book and about yeah. your music? Yeah, so I talk um I wrote a book. It's called Fly. Find Your Own Wings and Soar Above Life's Challenges. And that is one of many things that, that I want to write. Um, this first project was, was more along the lines of, I wanna introduce the world to everyone who impacted my life, from my mom to my, my, my current guide, to my teacher who introduced me to the sport, to my orientation and mobility specialist, so many different people who elevated me to a point where like you're seeing the, you're seeing the result of all of their hard work and what they did. And so being able to tell those stories from my perspective as, as a kid growing up was, um, it was super important to me and, uh, that it actually came out in, in April. So it's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and on my website as well, which is LexGillette.com. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it won't be the hardest read, and I did that purposefully because I want people to I wanted people to go you know behind the scenes and um, and just really really enjoy the essence of of the relationships that have been forged and and the ones that have helped me get to this point um, and and definitely wanting to take some uh, some lessons that that could be uh, fused within the text so that the reader can can walk away and say, hey, you know what? Um, yeah, this was inspiring, but you know, I can, I can tap into this skill. I can tap into being vulnerable. I can tap into one of the chapters is called Remove the Blindfold. And that has so many different, uh, so much symbolic meaning to it. Um, just kind of removing the fears from our life, removing as it relates right now, a lot of the biases that are, that exist. Like, I mean, it's, it's just, yeah, I think it's a really good, good read. I'm biased, <laughs> of course, but um, I would check it out. And in terms of the music, um, I've been I've been dilly dallying around with the music for a while. And so my goal was to number one, get the book done, and number two, work on the the album. So Tokyo is scheduled to happen next summer, August, and my goal is to have that album out in 2021. So. Um, once things begin to clear up here in Southern California in terms of being able to travel around and go into different buildings and stuff like that. Um, I've been writing some, some songs and things so that uh, I'm gonna go into the, the studio and, and have the, the music as well. And my ultimate goal, my ultimate goal, I'm being long winded right now. 
my ultimate goal is to have a, a presentation where it is a lot of, you get the inspiration, you're going to get some takeaways that you can apply to your, to your life. And you're also going to get some of that music. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, a speech slash musical, if you will. Um, and that's going to be really exciting. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I love it. And if, uh, if you're anything close to the, the song you gave us earlier, it's going to be, it's going to be nothing <laughs> but the best for you. So fantastic. I'll wind things down by uh, just telling everybody who might be watching this as a recording. We hope that you will scroll down the page a bit, uh, register your attendance. If you are visiting Rotarian and you do so, successfully typing in uh, your, your, the spelling of your email address, you will get an email that you can share with your club secretary to make up a miss. Uh, there is also the discuss forum uh, at the bottom of the page. We hope you will leave your thoughts there as well. Uh, as we always like to do, we hand it over to our speaker for the final word before we stop the recording. And then everybody who's here, who's here can just keep talking to this guy because he's so amazing. So uh, with that, Lex, I want to hand it back to you. Uh, what, what, what word do you want to put in people's ears as, as they finish this one up? Yes, I think that, so I talk a lot about vision, which is really important. Our ability to see things before they exist, our ability to see beyond the horizon, but just as much as you have a vision, there comes a time where you may need a revision and our ability to change, to, to face different changes and, and, and make the necessary alterations and adaptations in life is just as important. Change is something that is an inevitable. We deal with change every single day. Some of it is classified as good change. We classify it as bad change. And I think at this particular time, we all can, we all can relate to that, that change. Um, and that is a huge component in being able to conquer your vision. So yeah, you have, your vision, your destination, but just know that sometimes you may have to revise, change things up. You may have to switch lanes. You may have to back up a little bit, um, but our ability to embrace that change and to be able to make the necessary plans to conquer that change is going to be the winning ingredient in order to get to that, that ultimate vision. Yeah. Thank you so much. And everyone, we will see you next week.